Hi, welcome to episode 25 of Renewing the Conversation, a series of interviews where we talk to leading industry professionals and experts about renewable energy and heating, with a focus on the home and what challenges face the industry and homeowners. Today we welcome Carolus Petrokovicius, Head of Smart Home at Evergreen Energy. Carolus speaks to us about weather compensation and why it's important to have it activated on your air source heat pump. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please show us your support by giving us a thumbs up. Enjoy the interview. Good morning, Carolus. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully today you're going to tell us and explain to us a little bit about weather compensation. It's a topic that I think not too many people know about. No. I personally find it a little bit complicated, so I'm hoping you're going to be able to educate me on what it is and why it's important to us. So if you're a new heat pump owner and you've got your heat pump installed, you're ready to go, why is weather compensation important? What exactly is it? First of all, thank you for having me. With the weather compensation, what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to um, to put your house into uh, what's called a, an equilibrium. So uh, for outside temperatures that are higher, you want to lower the radiator temperatures so that you're only compensating basically for the heat that you're losing out of the house. And if you think about a house, uh, the way that it, it heat works is that you if you're trying to keep the indoor temperature let's say at 21 degrees and if the outside temperature is 10 degrees you're losing heat into the outside air and uh, to maintain comfort in your house you basically need to compensate for this heat so whatever you're leaking out you should be putting into the house uh, to maintain your temperature at your desired 21 degrees as the temperatures outside get colder um, you'll need to put more heat into the house because you're going to be losing out more heat out of the house. And this is what weather compensation uh, does. It basically adjusts the heat that you're putting into the house uh, with the outside temperature um, as it's changing. So so does that mean that when we look at um, heat houses across the UK, housing stock across the UK being the majority of uh, homes that are going to be putting in heat pumps are going to be poorly insulated or have insulation issues? and therefore they're gonna be having a lot more heat loss from their home. So is weather compensation, even though it's important for every homeowner that's got a heat pump, is it kind of even more acutely important for homeowners that have are in older properties mm. where they're leaking a lot more of their heat? Each property should be evaluated to make sure that it, uh, it's appropriate for a heat pump. I do believe in the fabric first approach. So you want to make sure that you, uh, you make sure that your house doesn't leak. If you can get your house um, to the energy efficiency that you're happy with, and then you go for a heat pump uh, uh, when it's appropriate. Weather compensation is going to be important for all of them. For every single house, though, if you are getting a heat pump and it's supposed to deliver four units of heat for every electricity unit that you put in, you need to make sure that you're running it on that weather compensation curve. And this is where it becomes quite, uh, slightly counterintuitive that uh, when you, let's say that you had a heat pump installed and you have uh, you have a TRBs or uh, temperature stats that are just turning the heating on and off um, like you used to with the gas boiler. This is actually going to cost the customer more. Um, so heating your house for less time is going to cost you more. Ideal scenario would be that your heat pump just running in the background, uh, maintaining, putting as much heat into the house as it, as it is leaking out. So what exactly is happening during the course of if a heat pump is running in weather compensation mode? what exactly is happening is it just the actual compressor that's cycling down and producing less heat when it's when it's warmer outside when it when the temperatures drop it's actually cycling higher so it wouldn't be cycling a lot of the heat pumps uh, they're currently in the market are variable speed compressors so it reduces the uh, the compressor speed and therefore uh, can deliver the lower flow temperatures i have a heat pump and my house has been designed for 45 degrees uh, flow at uh, minus two degrees outside. So my weather compensation would start at that point. At minus two, I should be putting in 45 uh, degrees flow into my house um, to make sure that my house is maintained at the 21 degrees that the system has been designed for. As the temperatures outside is gonna start changing, you're gonna see that uh, flow temperature going into the house uh, lowering. So uh, the way that you set up uh, weather compensation on different systems is slightly different, but in a lot of cases, you set up two points. So in my case would be 45 degrees at minus two, and then you would set another point uh, for let's say 15 degrees uh, outside 
and uh, what should be the flow temperature to still maintain your comfort at 21 degrees. The problem that you face there is a lot of these calculations are done uh, before you're installing a heat pump and it is quite difficult to uh, get everything right. There are always errors in calculation and that can mean that uh, once your system has been installed, you need to tweak that weather compensation. Ideally, run your heat pump in the background all the time. Uh, maintaining that 21 degrees. So I believe that in order to help homeowners get their maximum benefits and efficiencies from um, weather compensation, you've created a product called Homely or a service called Homely. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? What is it and and how does it work? When I've created Homely, uh, it was, uh, I was doing a PhD in power networks. I was looking at the impact of heat pumps on wholesale electricity prices in the future and seeing how when we all have these shiny new things called heat pumps, uh, what is actually going to happen to the electricity prices? What's going to happen to the networks? Um, if, for example, we're all going to run them with uh, third party stats just, that just go on before you get back home and turn off when you go to sleep. From the network perspective, so the cables that are bringing the electricity to your homes, um, that's not going to be great. Just think of putting a ridiculous amount of water through a pipe that is not actually made for that. Uh, the pipe is going to burst, which uh, is kind of, you can think of the electricity networks in a similar way. One of the ways to actually uh, make this better is to manage the heat pump operation in a smart way. And this is where Homely kind of uh, came. So uh, Homely has been designed as a smart thermostat specifically for heat pumps to address these issue issues in the future and uh, to also reduce the cost of running them. Um, as when I was doing a lot of this research, I realized that a lot of these systems are not run in the most efficient way. They're run with on and off thermostats, uh, not achieving the COPs that have been promised to these customers. And uh, if this was to continue the actual heat pump revolution, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, we'd have a chance for it to happen. Is Homely a, a smart TRV? Is it something that goes on your radiators? What exactly is the actual product or is it just a service? The current offering is that you get a Homely hub which is a, just, it looks like a router box. It connects into your heat pump um, through these two cables and uh, that allows us to talk to the heat pump. Uh, and then it also connects into your router through the Wi-Fi signal so that uh, we can run our algorithms and uh, basically do all the clever stuff that then gets communicated back to your heat pump. Uh, in addition to this Homely hub, uh, there is a Homely node, uh, which is a temperature sensor that you place in the room that you use the most. So in my case, I have it in the living room. It is just like a, a wireless thermostat, but it, instead of kind of going for the on and off signals, we are reading a lot more. We're communicating with a heat pump the way uh, that we can actually find out a lot more information. So we can we can change the temperature that is leaving the heat pump. Uh, we can read information like the hot water temperatures. We can change those hot water temperatures. We can, um, we can even find out if there is an an issue with your heat pump. If the heat pump is saying uh, that there is an error, um, we can actually retrieve that and uh, investigate these issues remotely um, together with, uh, with the help of the engineer that installed the homely. So it sounds like it's it's very straightforward. It's not doesn't sound like it's a huge piece of kit that's going to take up a lot of space. And it sounds like it's really easy and quick to install. Are you seeing um, an uptick in people buying these uh, homely um, devices and putting them into their, their our homes because obviously we're going into the winter and I think now everybody's starting to really think about how efficient their heat pumps are going to be this winter. So we've decided to go through the route that installers need to install a homely and uh, that's partly because we'd like the installer to do the proper job to make sure that once they leave the site uh, it's already done the most efficiently and also to communicate to the customer what to expect out of their heat pump so that it doesn't come as a surprise when the heat pump is actually running continuously in the background uh, and the radiators are not scalding hot. That's the way it should be. And um, that's your uh, weather compensation doing its thing. It's not a big box. Uh, as you said, it's a, it's just a tiny router box. Uh, it plugs into your heat pump through two cables. From the customer's perspective, they get a nice shiny app, homely app, uh, which again, just asks people, what temperatures would you like to maintain in your home? And then homely in the background does all the clever stuff to make sure that these are done in the most efficient, cost-effective way. Uh, whilst maintaining the comfort. So does it work with only specific brands or does it work with irrespective of what heat pump you've got, it'll work with that? At the moment, we've decided to go for uh, a few brands. So the ones that are quoted on our website is uh, Media and Samsung. We are constantly integrating new heat pumps um, and we'd love to hear um, customers' feedback on which ones we should look into next. Some heat pumps are uh, 
more open towards integrations from third parties. Some heat pumps are not so not quite as open as a homeowner how do you know if you've got a heat pump installed and you're sitting watching this interview and you're thinking "Hmm, interesting i wonder if i have weather compensation how can a homeowner check if they've got weather compensation already activated um with their heat pump probably the easiest way would be um to check whether you have a third party thermostat the on and off control. So are you currently scheduling your heating to come on at specific times of the day? Let's say in the morning between seven and nine, just as you get uh, get up and then um, six till 10 o'clock in the evening when you get back from work. Do you have a thermostat that actually uh, does this and uh, turn off turns off the heat pump uh, during the other times? Because if you do, uh, then you probably are not running on the weather compensation or at least not on the weather compensation that uh, should be running that heat pump. In an ideal scenario, heat pumps that are running with weather compensation uh, would not need third-party controls and your um, your temperature inside the house would be maintained at your desired temperature. You can have setback temperatures, but that's a slightly different approach to what the current controls would do where they just turn off the unit completely. Mm -hmm. That's one approach. You can also have a look at your heat pump and the different manufacturers will have different settings. You can go into the weather compensation settings and uh, just check what that has been set up to do. There's a school of thought where people say that weather compensation shouldn't work if you've only got underfloor heating in your house. Is that true? No, absolutely not. (laughs) So irrespective um, of what, whether you've got rads, a mixture of underfloor heating, weather compensation should just be the go-to. The principle is still the same. So uh, whether you're delivering the heat into the house through radiators or underfloor heating, it should all be the same. You would just need to set up the weather compensation slightly different. So in my case, I'm running radiators in my house and uh, at minus two, I want to be putting in 45 degrees into uh, my system. With underfloor heating, uh, you usually run at much lower flow temperatures. So uh, it would be, for example, 35 degrees at minus two um, outside to maintain the same comfort because you have a lot more heat emitter area. So instead of just having a a simple radiator, you have the whole of your floor as the medium that is Mm -hmm. emitting heat. So you can deliver more heat into the house with lower temperature that is going through. the for people that uh, haven't necessarily invested in homely or if they don't have a heat pump that's actually currently compatible with that would the next step be to potentially go down the smart home routes of getting smart thermostats smart trvs to try and help regulate some of the actual flows through the system and to try and make it a little bit more efficient this is going to sound slightly counterintuitive but um a smart thermostat that is uh, just the on and off control might actually get the customer to pay more for their heating uh, rather than less and that is because it runs on this uh, principle of on and off um, control. Third party controls, TRVs or um, temp- uh, smart thermostats, I think that they should be used more like temperature limiters. So um, if you would like your house to be 21 degrees, you should set these TRVs or uh, thermostats to let's say 22. Um, so as to make sure that it, when the sun hits your windows and it gets really, really hot, then it actually closes off the room. Uh, if you're cooking again, that it closes off the room. But in other scenarios, heat pump should be just doing its thing and uh, running on the weather compensation so that it's not uh, kind of prevented by these third party stats to do what the heat pump is supposed to be doing, which is running continuously in, in the background, uh, putting as much heat into the house uh, as is actually leaking out. So even though it sounds counterintuitive, heating your home for more is going to cost you less. It is true when it comes to heat pumps. The lower you keep the flow temperatures, um, the higher the efficiencies that you get. Just as an example, if you have a 10 degrees outside, it's an air source heat pump. Um, if you were to run your radiators at 55 degrees flow, you would be getting an efficiency of three to one. So you'd be getting three units of heat into the house for every electricity unit that you put into the heat pump. If you were to run those radiators at 35 degrees flow, you would be getting five units of heat for every electricity unit that you put in. So what is the roadmap? So you mentioned that it currently works with Samsung and my dear. Uh, then you're, you're looking at potentially rolling out with the EcoDans or Mitsubishi, potentially with LG, some of the other brands. Is there a roadmap and uh, an approximate plan as to when that might be available? I wouldn't be able to commit to any dates. We have worked with uh, Daikin. Um, we have worked with LG before. And those integrations are not going to be released uh, just yet, but we are working to get them out there. We are looking into... Um, expanding what Homely is offering. So Homely started off as the smart thermostat for heat pumps, but it was always the intention for Homely to uh, go towards the whole house optimization. We're now working on algorithms that can look at the forecasted solar PV production for the day ahead, look at what your battery 
can actually get off the grid uh, during the cheaper times of the day and then manage the heat pump again flow temperature to make sure that uh, it matches up for example with a pv production that is a really interesting point though because mm. a lot of homeowners that have heat pumps do have solar or pv installed so it is actually really interesting that you're thinking about you know how to get the whole system working together efficiently i think that that's something as homeowners ourselves we install um, solar and then we install the heat pump and i've always kind of I felt like even though when we put it in and that we our plan was to install it and we invested in it we our vision was that everything would work together and become this really efficient system mm -hmm. and actually they just don't work yeah. together so uh, it would be it, it is really an ultimate goal as a homeowner to be able to have a whole system that just kind of talks to each other and works with each other and becomes this really a super efficient heating yeah. system that would be really the dream isn't it that's our aim we started off with heat um we knew that it's going to be really difficult. One side of things is to make sure that the heat pumps are uh, kind of run in the most efficient way possible. So algorithms uh, on the maths that, that come with that. But also on the other side, it's the how to live with a heat pump. So you mentioned that Homely at the moment is sold through installers and it's part of your, your relationship is directly with the installers and then the installers are fitting in. Is that right across the UK? Is it just in a certain part of the UK? Is it in Northern Ireland? Is it, are you looking at going into Europe? If homeowners are watching us from all over the world, hopefully, um, where, where can they think about putting this into their homes? Installers can register all across the UK. Um, we are working with a couple of of distributors um, to stock our kit. We will be moving into Europe soon. Watch that space. Uh, can't really say just yet, uh, but we will be moving into Europe. And uh, the whole idea is that yeah, it, we'll start. We started off with UK. Um, we are now moving into Europe. Well, thank you, Corrales. I think it's been an education in uh, weather compensation. Hopefully, it's just got our viewers thinking a little bit more about what weather compensation is and if they've got it activated. Um, if they want to find out more about Homely, um, how can they get in touch with you or how can they, uh, where, where should they go? And they can visit our website, homelyenergy.com. And again, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure to chat to you guys. Brilliant. Well, thank nice you very promise. much. And viewers, if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to ask Corollis a little bit more information <laughs> if you need it. That would be great. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you.